with Mark Grady of the Smith Falls Bears matinee game here this afternoon. Mark, uh, the Bears, it seems year after year, during your tenancy here, the, the Bears have been pretty competitive in the top four. What, what uh, obviously, it's a big part of, uh, of your efforts, but the, what's key building blocks in this organization? Well, you know, I think it's, uh, we have a wonderful venue and uh, the town supports the team well, so when you're recruiting players, it's, uh, it's a decent place to play. And uh, of course, when they get a look at uh, what we have to offer and, and the fact that we're, we're competitive every year, and the kids that have moved on, that uh, it's, a, it's a location that, uh, I'm not going to say it's a preferred location, but it certainly helps us when we're trying to recruit players from out of town. Uh, maybe a short synopsis of the year to date. Uh, when you went into this year, what were your particular needs and how did you address them? Well, we had lots of needs, obviously, with uh, lots, lots of turnover again last year with guys. The, uh, the Duf injury had an impact on, on kids deciding that uh, they were going to go to university full-time and not play hockey anymore. And, uh, uh, kids moving on to uh, graduating from for age, obviously, and and uh, obviously there's some some players that we, we you know, every year to year you, you don't want back. You just want to you want to upgrade. And so we did a pretty good job, I think, in to start the season, and obviously got off to a great start. And then uh, uh, Johnny Kern, a, a player that uh, was decommitted by Western Michigan, and decided to take a deal at Niagara University midway through the season. Uh, I, I decided that uh, maybe he should go home and play until he leaves to go to Niagara because he wasn't going to be part of the big picture for the year. So that was, a, that was a, a, an impact impact player leaving us with uh, obviously the top scorer at the time. And uh, you know what, other guys picked up the slack. And we've had guys that have been, there's been peaks and valleys in the season. Good start. Uh, going into December, it wasn't great. And then we picked it up a little bit. January hasn't been too bad. And February's been a little funky. But you know what, we're, we're just going to keep working and see where it takes us. Goal Tenny, you guys have been really strong in that position. Uh, you had a hard act to follow last year with Mr. Pinos, Evan DeBrower. Could you hope for more than he's uh, done this year? Well, I guess I could hope for more. I could hope that he doesn't have to play every game. And I'm in a situation where uh, he's the guy and he wants to play every game, so I'm just a little worried about uh, how tired he might be getting. And uh, he's uh, certainly as an 18 year old coming into the league, never having played junior. He's, he's had a wonderful season. His stats speak for themselves. He's had some help. We got a pretty good pretty good back end most games and uh, like everybody else consistency is a big thing with him and, and he's been he's been real good I, I can't I can't say that I can be any more pleased with, with what he's done this year he's a big part of all the success we've had the league when's the last time you've seen the league like this the parody the you're right in the thick of things here I mean there's not a whole lot of room for one day year before we went to the finals you know, I think it was one to one to seven was it was ridiculous. We were before Christmas when we had uh, six. I think we had 61 scholarships that year, and the guys decided uh, they didn't have to work too hard after that. And we fell from I think second overall to about sixth or seventh, and ended up in the Carl place in the first round. So uh, that's the year I think I, I can probably compare the closest to this year with the parity. This series obviously is no different this year. The Braves and the Bears. What is it that the Braves you see do well? Well, they score. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty offensive team, and uh, especially with his top line with Johnson, uh, uh, Billings, and, uh, and uh, the Robinson kid. They're, they're a pretty prolific uh, goal scoring team, and, it was, and uh, I guess yeah, going down the line, once he gets uh, folks back from injury, he's going to have two top lines who can score, and those other, those other, those other two lines that he has are, are, uh, work real hard. And, I mean, they're depth players, and he's got some guys there with some ability. I think last game that the uh, guy, guys in the third and fourth line got some goals were important. Chad addition was a is a good player. He's obviously an offensive minded player and add folks back into the to the mix. That's a pretty dynamic offensive team. Goaltending's been great. Their, their goaltender has obviously set some real good uh, set the bar pretty high with, with breaking some records. So uh, that's a good hockey club and uh, you know what? I think you can go either way most games and we both need a better outing from both our goaltenders from the last game. I wasn't sure if that was going to we were going to lose that one by a touchdown. Yeah, a little uh, anomaly there in the series in that one, the seven six game. I, I started this interview talking about your tenure with the Bears. How, how long uh, has that been? And you, you have some association with the league prior to this? Yeah, yeah, it's five five years now. I've been the head coach and the year assistant coach with uh, Billy Bowker. And uh, prior to that, I was in uh, I was in Cumberland for seven years. So. Dating myself here, so we got a few years in the league, and uh, uh, I'm always looking to do better myself every year as, as, as a coach, and hopefully bring uh, hopefully my work ethic wears off on the kids, and 
I'm always looking to get better. So it's, it's been good. I work for a good ownership group, and uh, they leave me alone to look after the hockey. And I guess uh, uh, their payback is that we, we ice a very competitive team every year with, with a group of kids that you know, I consider most days to be pretty good kids and model citizens. So. Today, what do the Bears need to do to be successful? I know you said one thing that the goaltending needed to be a little bit better, probably at both ends. But what do the Bears need to do to be successful today? You know, if we could throw a piece of trace paper over top of how we played the other night against Cumberland, we were pretty good in that game, except for the last uh, three or four minutes where they, they got a bit of a funky goal on the power play, and, and then the goalie pulled with, you know, uh, on an icing. The guy's a little tired. Uh, you know, if we can, 57 minutes of that game, if we can bring that here today, it'll be a real competitive game. And we have to lock down. It'll be a lot better defensively and not let their skilled players get the get the ice that they want and make them play in small spaces. So, I mean, that's, that's you know, I'm not recreating the deal here that, you know, take, take time and space away from skilled players and make them play in areas that are not comfortable playing. And I don't get last change here. And as history dictates, we're going to see a lot of that top line. So. Thanks for doing this, Mark. As usual, really appreciate it. Good luck today. Good. Thank you very much. Mark Grady of the Smith Falls Bears.